The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. That's Malik Hill. I'm Joey Tysick. And uh, May is already almost over. And we get a long weekend this week with uh, Memorial Day coming up, which is nice for everyone. Um, School year is wrapping up for Malik, so a little less work, which is nice. Some more rest and relaxation in this heat. (laughs) Yeah, I'm tired of the heat. I'm tired of it already. The summer has barely started, so lock in, Joey. (sighs) The problem with the summer, though, is that most of our sports go away. We have baseball, but the Tigers are struggling, to say the least. Shouts out to Tarek Skubal. That's all I have to say. I kind of hope they trade him. And that guy that they keep putting in the lineup that can't hit, Mm. I'm not even going to say his name. Yeah, He needs to retire. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry. He, He should just go away. Yeah. Um, but we have the NBA playoffs going on right now. We have NFL OTAs, if anybody truly cares about that. I don't. Um, I like watching little clips of players yeah. getting in a rhythm. It's okay. The only interesting thing is the guys that are trying to hold out. Like right now, Justin Jefferson is not at OTAs because he's trying to get a contract. Um, I don't know if CeeDee Lamb was there or not. Um, I can't remember. But there, there was a couple guys that they're trying to get their money I would assume most of them will, um, but that's just something to to look out for, I guess. But not really going to talk about any NFL stuff today. Um, We just have NBA playoffs that we're going to kind of recap as we get into the conference finals. And then we're going to do a fun little topic in the second half of the show just as a celebration of college football 25 coming out. What is it? First week of July or something? Second week of July? Um... I think it's somewhere. I think it's somewhere around July. Yeah. And for us young guys that are getting older, we haven't had a college football video game in a long time. So I think a lot of people are are very excited. I'm a little hesitant, but I'm hopeful. That's all I'll say. I'm hopeful. So we'll see. All right, NBA playoffs. We have the Pacers taking on the Celtics. Unfortunately, the Knicks did not get it done in Game 7. Uh, things just fell apart. It yeah. broke my heart. It really did. They had they had their chance to make a comeback, but they just couldn't get a stop, and the Pacers just unloaded their one of the— uh, Are the Pacers the number one offense in the league, or they were up there? I think they were they the were number one there, offense. But they literally had the best shooting performance in playoff history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did. They shot— what, 60% from the three in the field? It was like 60, 67% from the field overall. Yeah. By the end of the first half, they were shooting over 70%. Over, It was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and then to make it even worse, Jalen Brunson left uh, the fourth quarter with a fractured wrist, broken wrist. Yeah, and they still had somewhat of a chance. Mm-hmm. And when he went out, it just deflated everything. Yeah. Yeah, so the Knicks, they ended up, over the span of the last couple weeks of the season into the playoffs, they lost uh, Julius Randle, Mitchell Robinson, Josh Hart at times, Jalen Brunson, uh, Bojan Bogdanovic. Like, they were yeah. a mess. And OG Ananobi tried to play, OG but Anna. it was clear that he couldn't run up and down the floor, really. Yep, and he missed a game for his injury. Um, Where do you think the Knicks need to go next? Because a lot of people are saying they need to get a superstar. Do you think they need to get Listen, a superstar? I- I would love for Donovan Mitchell if they if they somehow figured that out, but I don't know what trade they could put together that would like ship Julius Randle and like a few other players and some picks. I don't know. They do need another. They need something else. Yeah. Now I don't know if it, they need a superstar. I'm not sure if they need that because 
Jalen Brunson is the guy. Mm-hmm. Josh Hart and Dante DiVincenzo showed what they can do. They can step up. Some people want to like complete the full Nova Knicks thing mm-hmm. and go get Mikael Bridges from Brooklyn. Yeah. I think that would be a good fit, though. I think it would, too. So, I'm I'm not sure exactly what they want, but right. I would like the Mikael Bridges move. Like, does Julius yeah, Randle? Julius Randle's coming back. I've said, I've voiced my opinion that I don't like him on the Knicks. Mm-hmm. I think they're better without him, and they played smarter on both ends, offense and defense, without him. Yeah. But he's coming back, and he is an all-star level player, mm-hmm. so... If you have Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle, sliding in Mikael Bridges makes sense. Yeah. yeah. In, t- in today's basketball, having a big three doesn't mean anything anymore. Mm-hmm. You have to have a like complete team. And realistically, and pieces that make sense. You, you could probably trade Julius Randle for Mikael Bridges. Probably not straight up, but pretty close to. Um, if you wanted to go that route. And then, I don't know, maybe... I think Nick Claxton's value is too high at this point where you couldn't throw him in necessarily, but... Well, they, they already have centers that they... Right, yeah, that's they, what, they, they that's what I'm Nick saying. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I, I almost feel like the Knicks just need to go the the shooting route. They just add three-point shooters all around, and then Jalen Brunson has more of the paint to go in um, and maybe attack it that way, but I don't know. Um, I think the Knicks aren't done, though. I think I, I think they're going to be good for a little while now. And uh, it stinks that they were that close and then kind of came up short. But credit to the Pacers. They they keep battling through your uh, in-season tournament champions. Keep on marching in the playoffs. Let's never bring that up again. <laughs> Next season, for the rest of the time, it exists. I completely forgot that happened, mm-hmm. and I kind of just got annoyed that you mentioned they were in-season tournament champions. Yeah. It doesn't matter at this point. Well, One they made bit. it back to the conference finals. Congratulations, so. Indiana, I guess. <laughs> uh, I think to a lot of people's surprise, too. I don't think anybody really expected Indiana to make the run like they're doing. Um, and then they just played game one against the Celtics, and they had a chance to beat them. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Brown came up huge with a big three at the end of the game to send it into overtime. And then the Celtics just kind of pulled away at the very end. Um, but the Pacers... Like I said, they had their chances. They just had a couple of costly turnovers late in the game. But, I mean, again, their offense is one of the best in the league. So, they can keep up with anybody. Granted, the Celtics don't have uh, Chris Stops still. He's, they're saying he should be expected to come back in game four. But, again, if the Pacers are able to, to steal one at home and then when they come back to Indiana, get another game, they go up 2-1 and then Chris Stops comes back. They, that's still a lot of pressure on Boston. Because Boston has the highest expectations at this point. Everybody thinks that Boston should just almost win the championship somewhat easily. Well, they they everybody expected them to breeze through the East. Yeah. Whoever they faced in the West, that's when people figured it would be a matchup. But mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I I don't know. I, I was surprised too that Indiana was in game one. Um I wasn't fully surprised because the way they shot in that Knicks series, especially those last few wins, I thought it was close to impossible for them to just go cold all of a sudden. And they started off down 9 nothing, but it didn't take long for them to get right back in the game. Like, mm-hmm. Tyrese Halliburton was hitting those deep threes. Yeah, Miles Turner lit fire in the second half. Mm-hmm. Andrew Nimbard hit those timely shots. Everybody, the way they played through the Knicks series is exactly how they played against the Boston Celtics. Yeah, And not having... Uh, Porzingis, it obviously showed that it, it hurt them somewhat. Mm-hmm. Like, Al Horford is their only decent big, and he played well for the most part. But, yeah, when Luke Cornett came in the game, mm-hmm. there, there wasn't much chance for them to get stops down there. Like, Luke Cornett is like an 80s big right? that's just out there to be big, and that doesn't work much in the game anymore. Mm-hmm. You have to have something, like, to go with having size. Yeah. And – yeah, Miles Turner just feasted on him. Mm-hmm. And then going to the Western Conference side, the more interesting side, in my opinion. Um, but before we move to the West, okay, go ahead. Can we go uh, just a little bit in into the Celtics Pacers game? Yeah, go for it. Uh, I'm no longer a Jason Tatum fan. 
he scored 10 points in overtime, and that was great. Mm -hmm. But the horrible decisions he was making in the fourth quarter and him just going away from the ball for like a five, six minutes, like the last five, six minutes of the game in the fourth, he just wouldn't take any shots. Mm -hmm. And he turned the ball over like two or three times. And if it wasn't for that Jalen Brown shot, I think people would be so critical of him right now. Yeah. He got really lucky. Mm Mm-hmm. I I just I don't like his approach to the game right now. He has moments where he's aggressive and the moments where he just won't be. Yeah. And he he'll just leave it up to Derek to um Derek White and Drew Holiday to just take these shots in the in the clutch. Yeah. And I I'm just I'm not a fan of it at all. Yeah, I think a lot of people are starting to to lower Jason Tatum down the top players totem pole. Honestly, I don't I really don't think people are still I've, I see I people like on social media defending him because he does everything well. And I, to me, that's that's not enough. Yeah. If you're a top 10 player and you can score like Jason Tatum can score, I don't want to hear that you can do everything. Mm-hmm. I need you to dominate at the end of a game yeah. and take over. That's fair. But it seems like, yeah, their go-to guy down the stretch lately has been Jalen Brown, which is kind of funny. Um. So, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I feel like this is the last chance for the Celtics, to be honest. They got lucky they pulled that game out. Like, in Indiana, Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how they'll react after losing the game that they probably absolutely felt was a win. Yeah. Yeah, they haven't been in this type of situation before. I expect the Celtics to win in probably six. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I I don't have a good feeling about Jason Tatum. And the Celtics are still really good, but, yeah, they – they need Porzingis if they want to do anything special. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can agree with that. I'm trying to think of the way the Pacers win. Play TJ McConnell more. Even more. Yeah. Like I don't I don't care if you have to cut some minutes from like I don't even know who. Like maybe Obi Top. I don't know. But TJ McConnell, TJ McConnell seems to dominate every time he comes in. Mm-hmm. Like he gets to the rim at will, and it, it's a, it's honestly amazing seeing what he's done in this playoffs. Yeah, because he's insanely efficient. He doesn't turn the ball over. Those like short mid range jumpers are always good. Mm-hmm. Like Nimpard has hit huge shots. Yeah, so he has to play. But TJ McConnell is he's just he's so good. But he also just bench. fires wildly sometimes. He's always hit him when he needs to. <laughs> I you guess. need that. Yeah. A guy that a guy that's not afraid. Mm-hmm. Uh you you need something like that. Some J.R. Smith in him. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this is definitely the time the Celtics need to need to prove themselves. Otherwise they're gonna have they're gonna have a rough time because they've had a lot of chances with this roster now. And they keep adding guys, swapping out that third guy. Kyrie obviously didn't work. Um it looks like Kristaps could be could be the guy. But who knows? Um, we've seen Al Horford kind of resurrect himself in these playoffs. He always seems to kind of show up at this point. Yeah. Um, so I'm not super surprised, but it's always wild to think, like, he's been in the league so long at this point. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm not super interested in, in these Eastern Conference Finals, to be honest, unfortunately. I can understand, yeah. The West is a lot more intriguing to me. And... Now, with these, those two Game 7s were pretty surprising on both sides. Um, the Mavericks able to beat the young Thunder team in Game 7. Um, Kyrie kind of being that closeout game Kyrie that we hadn't, hadn't really been seeing uh, too often. But they got it done, and they're in the conference finals. P.J. Washington has been huge for that team. Derrick Jones was – yeah, he was the one in that game seven. Mm-hmm. Like that turnaround contested shot he hit yeah. in the last minute was was crazy. Yeah. And he hit several threes. Mm-hmm. So that was wild. And then the Timberwolves just – They came down from what, 18, 20? Yeah, 20 I think in the second half. Yeah. And even like into the – third quarter like late in the third quarter they were still down by a decent amount and the Nuggets just didn't have any answers Jokic was the only one that could do anything and the Timberwolves just took it to him 
Uh, Jaden McDaniels made a crazy shot. Carl Anthony Towns with like a putback jam late in the game to basically close out the game. Anthony Edwards didn't even have a very good game, but he mm-hmm. he had the like big shot to close it. Yeah, Nas Reed was big in the fall. Everybody stepped up. They got everybody needed to hit shots, and they, they all got did all the hustle points. Yeah, they did all the hustle. They grinded it out on defense. Like they just played hard, and they're like they're fun to watch because they give like maximum effort at all times and you don't always get that in the nba and it's just like this is like a young hungry team which is cool to watch um they kind of remind me of the suns from a few years ago hmm. and i hope they have a longer shelf life than the suns because they were done pretty much after one year say like, what suns team are you talking about the chris paul devin Booker. Okay. yeah okay they had the they had the veteran point guard mm-hmm. like they have mike conley they have the superstar two guard. They had Devin Booker, mm-hmm. Mikael Bridges, three and D, okay. Jaden McDaniels. Like you go down the line, it's very similar. Okay, to what the Suns were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Um, and then uh, on the other side, the Mavs just they keep surprising me because I, like I said before, I just think that Luca might be that guy that never gets a championship. Now he's got a chance, and if Kyrie, this might keeps, be his best shot. If Kyrie keeps playing the way that he has in the, like the last game and stuff they could do something and pj washington i mean i keep thinking he's gonna you know burn out at some point but he's been consistent at least through that that last series against the thunder so i think they have they have a decent chance and i don't i don't know i think i still want the timberwolves but i i don't know like matchup wise it feels like the Timberwolves should be able to take care of business pretty easily, just at a moment's glance. But again, I don't, I don't want to count out Kyrie or Luca because they they can do crazy things at times. So I don't know. Do you have a a read on this series? They're playing tonight. Yeah. So we haven't game seen one of the Western Conference the matchup yet, but I think Kyrie Irving is the ultimate X factor. Hmm. If he shows up big in these games. Dallas will have a chance every single time down to the wire. Mm-hmm. If he has those games, like the few ones he had against OKC, like where it was like 12 points, 14 points, scoring under, he needs to average at least like 18, 20. Mm-hmm. And ho- he needs to really average over 20. Yeah. Like the high level Cavs, like playing off of LeBron, getting buckets and making people look stupid mm-hmm. on defense. That's the type of Kyrie they need in this series. Yeah, because Jaden McDaniels and Nas Reed and all those gritty defenders, they're not going anywhere. Mm. And Kyrie is seen as the guy that has like the most unstoppable handles in league history at this point. Mm -hmm. He comes up with stuff on the fly that most people can't even think of. He needs to be that type of guy. Yeah. Yeah. And times where Luca isn't on or Luca's in foul trouble or he's going back and forth with the refs and gets emotional. He needs to be the guy that, yeah, locks the team back in, hits some shots, gets everybody going. Mm-hmm. I I think Kyrie, he's – a lot of it pins on him to me. Yeah. And if you watch some of his press conference stuff, like, in the last couple of days, like, he seems excited. And, like, he's embracing, like, this veteran role for this team. And it seems like he's kind of figured himself out after all these years. Um I mean, he's always been kind of vocal, I guess. Um, but also, at the end of the day, I think he means well, even though, you know, he said some some wild stuff in the yeah. past. But um, so it's cool to see. I'm kind of like I watched one of like his speech that he gave in the locker room after game seven, and it made me kind of want to root for him a little bit, which is a new thing for me because I'm not, not necessarily a Kyrie fan. Um, but he's... Yeah, he's definitely one of the best ball handlers of all time. One of the best clutch players of all time at this point, just because of some of the playoff games that he's had. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm kind of excited to see what this matchup is because it's two teams that are pretty different, just in general. Like the Mavericks are mostly offense; they don't play a ton of defense. They're not great at it. Um, they have a few key defenders like Derek Jones and yeah, yeah, they're big men in the paint. Derek Lively, Daniel Gafford. Mm-hmm. But then you have the Timberwolves, who again are just kind of a young team having fun, but they're they're playing defense all over the place. Yeah. 
Um, so can somebody stop Luca? And then on the other side, can somebody stop Anthony Edwards? I don't know. Do you I put, think I think for Minnesota, Cat is it comes down. Yeah, to him. he's he's the X factor for that. I all the time. I still don't have major faith in Cat. Hmm. I really don't. He is, is an elite shooter for a big man. He has a ton of skill. He has these moments where he looks like a superstar. Mm-hmm. And the other half of the time, there's he's just not there. Yeah. It's like he's invisible the, mm-hmm. the other times. And you don't know, in the in this level of a situation, I don't know what you're going to get game to game. Mm-hmm. And they need Cat to be on because I don't think Naz Reed and Jaden McDaniels can lift the load all the time like they did in game seven, mm-hmm. even though Naz Reed is uh, sixth man of the year. Yeah. You can't rely on a Rudy Gobert turnaround you know, Rudy can, either. You know, Rudy can give you 10 and like 15. Mm-hmm. But those ten points are only so much, you know. Mike Conley is a, he can go off for like fifteen to twenty, mm-hmm. but he's not going to do that a lot. Right. Anthony Edwards is the go-to guy. You know who the number one guy is. Cat, you have to be the high-level star that you probably you he believes he is, mm-hmm. and that a lot of people believe he is because he has the talent. Right. But when things get tight, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. I have no idea what Cat is going to do. Yeah. Because we know what Luke and Kyrie can do when things get tight. Mm-hmm. We know how they can rise to the occasion. Right. And Kyrie's the one now that in this series has the most experience out of anybody. Yeah. Um, so that could be a, a key thing. Yeah, this is Luca's second conference final, so I I think he's he's not afraid of anything. Right. And these Timberwolves, I don't think they're afraid of anything, but still it's a totally different yeah. experience for them. So they're kind of playing it by ear, but right now they're they've been pretty tough. So yeah, I mean I'm excited about I'm more excited about the Western Conference than the Eastern Conference Finals. Like I said, definitely, unless the Pacers, you know, their offense gets cooking and then games are close every game. But I, I don't I can't see that happening every game. Um, So for the Western Conference, it should be fun. And I feel like it's going to be Timberwolves Celtics. That's my guess. I wouldn't mind either either matchup, honestly. No, like seeing Kyrie playing against Boston, the team that. Kind of he's he came there and said he was like willing to stay there for a long time, mm-hmm. and then it ended so poorly yeah. and ugly. And seeing Luca in the finals would be great. That would be nice. But also, yeah, seeing Anthony Edwards, mm-hmm. the guy that doesn't care about nothing. Yeah, seeing him I, go against the Celtics, he's gonna want to rip their heads off. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I, to me, like it just helps. In my opinion, it helps the NBA when you have and. Yeah. It, Purists probably say otherwise because it's not the Lakers or the Celtics winning a championship. But if you get back-to-back seasons where you get the Nuggets to win a championship and then you get the Timberwolves this to win what, a championship. This is amazing for basketball. Right. Yeah. Uh, especially for guys like us who love, you know, some Sometimes, parody. I was just about to say that, yeah. So, like, I think it'd be fun. And then you get the new rising superstar in Anthony Edwards who, you know, isn't your prototypical, like, superstar. He likes to trash talk a bit. And we haven't seen well, that. He's a he's a he's a superstar of the old, right? Like the exactly. Kobe, the Kobe, the old two guards. We haven't seen that in a while. Yeah, which I think is fun. Um, so and he's not afraid to speak his mind. Like he was jabber drawn at the end of the last game. So, yeah, I think that's kind of exciting. Um, is there anything else on the playoffs that you want to touch on? Or, uh, I mentioned how I don't believe in Jason Tatum. And why watch him watch him go off for like forty next game? These things always happen with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Miles Turner is having a DeAndre Ayton run. Hmm. You remember in that run where every every other game DeAndre Ayton was putting up like twenty two or like twenty five and like twelve, and he was looking like a really good up and coming center, mm-hmm. like he was finally turning the corner. Yeah, and everybody was getting on board. And we were excited for him. He got his big contract. Mm-hmm. And then guess what happened? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, do we know where Miles Turner is Listen, on his contract situation? Until these playoffs, Miles Turner has always been seen as a soft big man to me. A modern day guy that just likes to stand around the three point line. He has the occasional like poster dunk because he's a very good athlete for his size. Mm-hmm. His rebounding numbers are much worse than they should be. Yeah. And now he's having this run where he's barely missing shots. Yeah. 
Like from three, it looks great. In mid range, it looks smooth. When he's in the post, he even has moves down there. He's starting to rebound some more. I'm afraid <laughs> that this Miles Turner run is is the yeah, DeAndre Ayton 2.0 where everybody starts to getting excited. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. He's got one more year. So he just signed this extension. It's just a two year extension, earning 20 mil a year. He won't be a free agent until 2025, yeah. 2026. I, I was one of the people that bought into the new DeAndre Ayton mm-hmm. when he was doing that in the playoffs. Yeah. And then he went back to barely trying half the time. Mm. So, yeah, I'm I'm cautious of this Miles Turner run. Well, Miles Turner will be 29, basically, when he's a free agent. Jeez, he is that he's, old. He's 28 right now. He came in. He was like 19 or 20 when he got yeah. drafted. He's already been in the league for nine years. Oh, my God. So, that is crazy. Yeah, so now when he becomes a free agent, he'll be basically looking for, you know, his last big contract, most likely. So maybe that plays a part into it, but yeah, it's interesting. It's it's a good timing for him to light up like this. I'm mm-hmm. happy for him. Yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm not gonna buy in and get burnt again, mm-hmm. like with DeAndre. Yeah. Um. Oh, might as well. What do like the Nuggets and the Thunder need to do to get back? Like, do you think the Nuggets I, are fine? Do you think the Thunder are fine? Did, 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 I think the Nuggets made a mistake in the regular season. They drafted guys out of college that could play, and they didn't get them prepared mm. like they did with Christian Brown last year. They played Christian Brown a lot and got him fully ready for like being in the playoff rotation. Uh, I'm I'm already forgetting the names, but they they drafted uh, Julian Strother from Gonzaga mm-hmm. and Hunter Tyson from Clemson. Both of those guys can shoot it. They're both tough, and I think they both could have contributed in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And they didn't play either of them. Yeah, especially Julian Strother because he's had some big moments in college. Yeah. Also think Zeke Naji could have helped them some. Hmm. A, a young athletic guy that could have given them some defensive minutes and some energy. They just didn't play any of them and stuck to like a seven-man rotation. Yeah. And yeah, Reggie Jackson gave them some decent time. And Justin Holiday hit some threes. But you got these younger guys mm-hmm. <laughs> that are ready, that are willing to go. They played very well for you in the summer league. They look good whenever you put them in the game to play in the short minutes of time. I don't know why they didn't have them ready. Yeah. So I I think they need to extend their rotation and mm-hmm. Yeah, they didn't You can't ha- just depend on two or three guys. They didn't have their Bruce get. Brown this year. They didn't, you know, yeah. last year it seemed like they had a lot more rotational pieces. Like a lot of people thought Peyton Watson would be that guy, but he didn't even play as much as people thought. Yeah. And Michael Porter Jr. was kind of up and down after he started the playoffs pretty hot. Um, KCP was, I felt like he was non-existent. Jamal Murray wasn't that good in the playoffs. No. Jokic was the only one that was consistent for them. And then outside of that, like, they didn't have a lot of offense to go to. That was the hard part. For the Thunder. They just got to get. Do you think? They they got their experience. Like, I, I don't think they need to. Could they trade for like another All Star? Maybe, but they have like, the picks for it. Like you, you've got guys. You got Chet Holmgren. You've got mm-hmm. Jalen Williams. Like, what do you need to trade for? Yeah, I mean, unless you want to like trade away Giddy and get a better point guard, right? Which would make sense, like getting a veteran guy in there. Yeah, to just make sure things are under control at all times. Mm-hmm. But outside of that. You you got your guys. Yeah, they Literally, just have to keep developing. Like I I keep, I I can't stand Sam Presti for he has his like rotation of guys for the next decade. Mm-hmm. They're set. Yeah, and they are the one seed in the West this year. Yeah, it, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah, they there's not much that they need to look into. Mm-hmm. Even got like you could keep Isaiah Joe. Um, Aaron Wiggins is good off the bench. I mean. You could invest in a backup center, maybe. Right. Because the other Jalen Williams, he's uh, he's very undersized. Mm-hmm. Get another big with size. Yeah, that's like two things. Yeah. A veteran point guard and uh, and another big. Yeah, I think they could use they could bolster their depth maybe if they wanted to. Yeah. Or they could get rid of some of their depth and trade it for you know a bigger asset, and then just go from there. Yeah, you you've got like you got Shea, you got the superstar Jalen Williams. 
could be an all star soon, and Chet Holmgren could be an all star soon, also. Mm-hmm. Like, you hit. Yeah. You just gotta. They just gotta gain more experience. Just keep getting better. Mm-hmm. Everybody knew this probably wasn't their year. So. Yeah. Pretty wild. Um, cool to see again that we're seeing these young up and coming teams, um, to kind of change the league and shake things up. Also funny that we're we're just not going to talk about the Cavs, but. It is what it is. I mean, I can bring him up. But. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell said he enjoys being in Cleveland and loves his teammates, but who but knows all the if he's rumors, actually going to be there. Yeah, all the rumors point to maybe him being gone. Yeah. And if Donovan Mitchell is gone, I don't know if the Cavs are able to bounce Evan back. Evan Mobley has to get better. I'll just say that. The Cavs might go back to being yeah. a very meh team. Evan Mobley, he, he showed a lot of signs of big improvement in that Celtic series. He has to become like closer to like an 18-10 and 10 guy. Mm-hmm. So, that's the NBA playoffs so far. Like we said, there's only been one game in the conference finals, so um, we'll keep you updated as these games get going and we get a better sense of how the teams are. Um, But, like we said, we wanted to have a little fun as it's starting to get to that time of the year where we start doing top tens and fun episodes like that. Um, With College Football 25 coming out, we wanted to do our top favorite football players in video games whether it be NCAA games or Madden, because I didn't play a ton of NCAA football games. I had a, a couple back in the day, but college football wasn't really my thing. And I only really played them because my brother was into college football. Um, so, yeah, I have a limited experience. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have to go into my love for college football. I, I've said I'm a college football sicko. My uncle... Pretty much raised me. every time I went to his house, he was playing college football. Mm-hmm. So that's how I like got into those games. Do you know your I, first football video game? The first one I actually had for myself mm. was NFL Street. Okay. On the original Xbox. Mm. My mom, I, I believed I was in the second grade. My mom took me to Great Lakes <laughs> <laughs> and got me the original Xbox. And a few different games, but NFL Street was like the first one I ever played. Nice. That was mine. Hmm. I remember that vividly. Yeah. I don't remember if I played NFL Blitz before. Um, I might have been like an arcade. but yeah. the first... I remember playing like my cousin's Madden on like the PS1, mm-hmm. but that wasn't my system. I was going to say my first actual game, football game, was Madden 2000 on the N64. <laughs> nice. Um, and I used to play as the Jaguars all the time. Fred I, Taylor. I guess they were the best team in the game, basically. But, yeah, Fred Taylor um, was on that team. And I used to just – you could, like, run, like, halfback sweeps in that game, and you'd just get out to the outside so fast that it was almost like a cheat code at the time. I would assume the Rams were probably, like, the best team in the game at the time because that's when they had the uh, – Yeah, they probably Sean too. Turf, mm-hmm. Marshall Falk, and all those guys. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't, I didn't yeah, know a Fred ton. Fred Taylor was a monster. At so. the time, so I just I just had the game. And their uniforms were cool, too. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we found the game at, like, a garage sale or something, and that's why I have it. Um, but, yeah. So I have limited experience with that. And then I got into Madden, like, a lot when I finally started enjoying football uh, when I got into about high school. And I had a couple buddies that, um, that we would play almost every weekend or every time we got together, we'd play, like, two-on-two Madden all the time. Yeah, I haven't played a Madden in over a decade. The last one I think I played was Madden 13 on the Xbox 360. Wow. I played uh, NCAA 14 college football more than any game in my life probably. Mm. I've done more Road to Glories and Dynasties than I can even think of. Yeah. And I've already pre-ordered the $100 deluxe edition of college football 25. So you know where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I got a PS5 specifically for that. Yeah. And I'll, I'll definitely pick up the game at some point just so we can play together or something. That'd be fun. Um, but I'm, I'm going to be a little bit patient with it just because I've played sports games in recent history and they're not so great. So I'm just, I'm hopeful, but I'm waiting. Um, all right. Into our top five favorite football players in video games. I know. Couldn't find a, a better title. Um, I just wanted to mention my honorable mention really quick because I thought of it while we were talking about playoffs. My honorable mention is a college football set of players. It's the Oregon Ducks. And Listen, like the are we talking like two thousands era? 
like or late just over, like 2010s. Okay. So, so like we're I, talking about Jeremiah Masoli, I'm talking, Marcus Mariota. I'm talking like LaMichael James, <laughs> yeah. uh, DeAnthony Thomas, Marcus Mariota. LeGarrette Blunt. A slight throwback, Dennis Dixon. Yes, sir, Dennis um, Dixon. All the running quarterbacks and just speed on that team, that was fun for me. Yeah. And I love their uniforms. So. Do you have any honorable mentions or do you want me to just go to five? Uh, I'll go back to, I think it was NCAA 05. Vince Young and Reggie Bush mm. playing with them in game. It was, it was stupid. They were so much better than everybody. Like mm-hmm. they could do anything, especially Reggie Bush. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go with those front honorable mentions. Okay. Um, my number five is also a college athlete. It's my last college football player. Um, Cause like I said, I played more Madden, um, but Nevada was always my team for no apparent reason in the NCAA football games. Mostly just like the logo, like the color schemes. They were a pretty good team at the time. And I didn't realize that their quarterback back then was a young Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. And in they that were, game, They were in the pistol. They were like yeah. one of the few teams doing it at the time. Mm-hmm. He could run and had a cannon. Right. Yeah. I loved their offensive schemes in that game. Um, I believe we were talking about it before. I think it was NCAA football 09 or something like that that I was playing. Um, he had a big arm. Could run the ball if you needed to, just a versatile quarterback. And I, I don't love quarterback in football games. It, I'm, it's not my strong suit. Throwing the ball is not my strong suit. My strong suit is typically running the ball. Um, but Colin Kaepernick was a lot of fun to use in the old college football game. So he's my number five. My number five is kind of similar reasons, mm-hmm. but it's a really like personal homer pick because he was overpowered in NCAA 14 because of his skill set in about real co- life. Talking about the cover, cover I mean, athlete? He Denard Robinson wasn't <laughs> in NCAA 14. It was another Michigan quarterback. because oh, it's always – Devin dirt. Gardner. Yeah. When I tell you, he was damn near like Vince Young in NCAA 14 because he could throw it. He had a big arm, and he had, like, low 80 speed. Mm-hmm. So you were in the spread offense with Michigan, and he was basically unstoppable. Yeah. Like, he could run the read option and take it to the house. He could throw it deep. He was accurate. under. He could do everything. Mm-hmm. And one of my, like, first few dynasties I remember playing in NCAA 14 was with Michigan. Hmm. And I won a couple national championships <laughs> with him as my quarterback. Nice. So that, that, yeah, that's just a personal one because he was, he was just so good in that game. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, my number four is one of my favorite – well, Basically, all of these players basically just reflect my favorite football players of all time. Um, so there's probably some correlation there. Um, I don't know exactly what game it was because Madden 07 would have been his rookie year. So I'm not sure if when I started using him, but it was probably even in Madden 07. But Maurice Jones drew for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Short little guy, but he was elusive. He was like 90 some speed. Yeah. Um, he could catch the ball a little bit. Like he could do a little bit of everything and just being like little, but strong. I don't know. It made it enjoyable and funny. Um, and he was one of my favorite, uh, football players when I was getting into football because of that reason. Again, I, I liked the Jaguars helmets. I liked watching them. So, um, Maurice Jones drew was just a lot of fun to use. He had a really good, like juke move and I like the elusive backs a lot of the times because I like to try to do spin moves and jukes and all that stuff um so yeah I think Maurice Jones Drew would be my number four so I have three Madden players on my list and they are all from Madden 2004 wow okay all of them and my first one okay then one of them has to be the cover athlete and my first one (laughs) goes I wasn't even a Steelers fan at this point. It was like a year or two away from me becoming a Steelers fan. But because my uncle was a Steelers fan and I used to watch him play so often mm-hmm. and his style of play and the way he was built and it was replicated in Madden 04 and I just used to love seeing him run over people mm-hmm. and just trample over defenders. Jerome Bettis. God. <laughs> just running with him like 30 mm-hmm. times. And just seeing him truck people over and over again. Mm -hmm. You could go for like six or seven touchdowns with Jerome Bettis in a game. Yeah. Just because of how like overpowered his trucking ability was. Mm -hmm. 
And he had some elusive, like his juke was pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, he he was just like a versatile, huge running back that you could just yeah do very hilarious stuff <laughs> with. And it was very entertaining to me as a child. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna go Jerome Bettis. Mm. All right. Uh, my number three, again, one of my favorite players of all time. And again, this correlates with me not being a great passer in Madden. Um, I loved one of my favorite teams was the Eagles with Michael Vick, Jeremy Macklin, and my number three, Deshaun Jackson. Go Chuck routes deep. for days. <laughs> Chuck it deep. Yeah. Um, I also, because I was good at running the ball, I was pretty good at returning the ball. So I would always have him as my kick returner, punt returner. And you never know what could happen because – all you have to do is just break through a couple times, and he was gone. Um, I don't know if they gave him, like, ever 99 speed or whatever, but he probably was close, if not. Um, and, again, I would just – because my brother was always a lot better than me at Madden, but I guess because I played him a lot, I was able to beat him pretty often too, whereas most of his friends couldn't beat him. Um, but I would always – he. My brother was really good at using the the defensive ends for his defense. So I would always have to get the ball out quick. So I would always just run like stupid plays where it's just like really quick, either like a quick slant with Deshaun Jackson or just watch him and have a go route. And if he beat the defender, I'm just lobbing it and hoping for a touchdown. Um, And for me, that was just fun to just have the fastest guy and just throw the ball deep and hope hope things go well. So that was always fun for me. Your number three. I'm torn on my number three because there's one I want to pick. Oh my god, I don't know which one to go with. <laughs> one option is like a combined two players. Mm-hmm. I'm you know what? I'm gonna kind of audible and give a last minute honorable mention. Okay. Trendon Holiday. Do you remember him? No. I have no idea. He was a five foot five. Wait, is it spelled? Wait, is it Trinden? Yes. Yes. Okay. I know that player. Um, Five foot five receiver slash kick returner. mm -hmm. Played at LSU. Also played in the NFL for like the Broncos and a few other teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember him as like a special teamer. In in NCAA football 08, he was the smallest player in the game and he had 99 speed. Mm -hmm. So he was just amazing to play with and I loved it. Honorable mention for that. My actual number three. Wait, let me throw out an, honor, on, okay. an, an honorable mention as well that we can't forget about. Devin Hester, the only player to ever get 100 speed yeah. in the Madden games. Fast guys are fun. Go ahead. Sorry. I have a combination of two players, hmm. and this would be in the range of like NCAA 06, hmm. maybe 05, but like their proms were like 06, 07. Pat White and Steve Slayton, quarterback and running back for West Virginia. Man, I'm so glad you brought up Pat White because... You talk about unstoppable. Mm-hmm. Two players with 90 speed, yeah, a quarterback and a running back, plus they gave him like high throw power. Mm-hmm. It it was it was unfair, pretty much, yeah. to play with West Virginia. Because it didn't, it didn't matter who your receivers was, who mm-hmm. the tight ends were, even if the O-line could block. Yeah. You had two guys that could do ridiculous stuff with jukes and spins and... All types of wild stuff mm-hmm. back there playing college football. And it was beyond fun playing yeah. with those two. Mm-hmm. So Pat White and Steve Slayton. Yeah, Pat White. They were ahead of their time. I think I mentioned it before, but he was one of my favorite college players to watch just in general. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure I played with Pat White in those un- old NCAA football games in the limited times that I played. Um, my number two, my top two are running backs. Just spoiler alert. Again, for some reason, I like running the ball. Um, And most of the time, I like somewhat of the elusive guys. But there's a few guys that are the bruisers that I really like. And one of my favorite running backs of all time played for the Ravens. I believe he had like 99 stiff arm at one point. Willis McGahee. (laughs) This guy is exactly how you described Jerome Bettis. You could just run up the middle. You could do halfback dives all the time, and you just hold the A button. That was the stiff arm on, like, the 360, Xbox 360. And he would just always 
like deflect the first defender that ever came by him. He could truck, but he could also have, he had a little bit of elusiveness, not a lot, but he had just enough. And so he was always the player that if you got like one-on-one on to the outside and you, you knew that you were going to break at least one tackle and he could just keep going. And he's one of my favorite players. And so that was like my one introduction, I guess, to the bruising back that I liked. So Willis McGahey, probably my number two. My number two is my favorite receiver of all time. At the time, he was in Minnesota. He just, he, he was electric in real life and in the game. He was the definition of just throw it up there. And he's going to go and get it most times. Mm-hmm. And with Dante Culpepper at quarterback, that's usually what they did. And in Madden 04, it, it, it worked like 90% of the time. Randy yeah. Moss. Yeah. I mean, you could put him on kick return, and he would return it half the time because mm. he had like 97, 98 speed. Throw it deep. He's going to outjump whatever corner's there mm-hmm. or just outrun them. He, it, he was close to unstoppable. And just beyond fun to play with. Uh, so, yeah, Randy Moss. Yeah, I was going to say, there's been a couple of those guys throughout the Madden history. Guys that I always think of as like Calvin Johnson, you could always just throw it up to. Um, for me, Andre Johnson was one that you could do it pretty often. Um, and then I think in like, I don't remember what Madden it was, but they were, it's like when they first started adding abilities to the game. And... It was like right after Odell Beckham Jr.'s breakout game. He had like the spectacular catch ability and stuff. And you could just throw it up to him in the end zone. He would make almost every catch. And it was it was ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, it's always funny getting those kind of guys. That used to make my brother really mad. Because, again, I'm not the greatest passer. I, I typically – so my brother and I – here's a story, tangent. We used to play franchise all the time because I didn't really like playing – doing play now i wanted to build my team that was always my favorite thing doing fantasy drafts so we would always do that and it seemed like every time i did a fantasy draft if i drafted like peyton manning tom brady like the best quarterbacks i always expected greatness and that was my detriment i always did best and this is partially why i fell in love with tyrod taylor is using him in madden because i could draft him really late and because i had a quarterback that wasn't rated as highly I played safer and I played better that way because I was being more meticulous rather than just lobbing it up being like, come on, he's Tom Brady. How can he not make that throw (laughs) kind of thing? Um, So that was just kind of the fun part. Um, And yeah, I don't know. I already forgot where I was going with that, but that's the story. Just funny. My passing (laughs) ability. Yeah. Um, All right. So my number one, should really come at no surprise because it's one of my favorite offenses of all time. One of my favorite teams of all time. And he's in my top five players of all time, I believe as well. And the most random one for, for most people that you never expect, but the dolphins back in 2008, 2009 or whatever, ran a little old offense called the wildcat. And they became Unstoppable for a season. Funny enough, Pat White was on that team, backup yes. quarterback at the time, but I used him a lot in that game. Not the player I'm talking about. The player that I'm oh, talking we, about. We're talking about Ronnie Brown right now. We're talking, we're talking about, about the guy that could do everything and he could do it in Madden, Ronnie Brown. Listen, when they put the Wildcat <laughs> in Madden, it was I was so excited when they yeah. put it. It didn't work as well as it did in real life, but no. Yeah. But the fact that you could play Ronnie Brown at running back, and he was a solid running back at the time. I think he was probably like 80-some overall. Um, decent speed, decent juking, decent power. Like, he was an all-around guy. But you could put him out wide in the in the Wildcat, and you could run, like, halfback sweeps between him and Pat White or something. Or you could throw it to him. He had really good receiving stats. But the best part of he all, could throw. <laughs> he could throw. Yeah. He had... Just enough like throw power and accuracy because of the Wildcat that year. It boosted his ratings enough. And you could just run the dumbest things. And you could like you could throw little screen passes to Pat White and then have Pat White run. And 
Ronnie Brown was the cog of that whole offense, and I fell in love with it because I love the stupid plays in Madden. I am total cheeser, to be honest. If I'm not running, like, I don't know, like my game plan, like my brother hates it because, because we always play, and, like, I love the halfback draw, and not too many people use the halfback draw. You got to use it at the right time. But I do, and yeah. I love it. <laughs> Um, because I play out of the shotgun a decent amount, again, because my brother brings so much pressure. Um, so every once in a while, he brings all the pressure off the edge. I halfback draw up the middle and get a 10, 15-yard gain. Um, but that was, like again, my introduction to learning complex offenses in video games. And that's where, I think for me, that's where Madden started to get fun, is because I started like learning about the offenses took me a while to learn defenses, but I slowly started figuring things out. And that's how like my brain started getting analytical. Cause I'm, I'm such an analytical brain that in video games for me, I needed some sort of challenge and Madden. I was just like, I don't know what's going on. Um, but to learn offenses and defenses through Madden helped me learn and to enjoy the NFL even more. And I think that's where that all snowballed to where now football is my second favorite sport behind basketball and with the Pistons being as bad as they are, like well, football's kind of number one right now, which is wild. Um, and like I said, I probably can give some credit to that Dolphins team for doing that for me. So that's why Ronnie Brown, number one. I'm, I'm not even going to drag this on. I mean, this is out of the, the childish joy mm -hmm. that millions of children got, not only watching him when he played for the Falcons, but in Madden 04. The mm -hmm. cover athlete, ninety nine speed for a quarterback. Yeah, I wouldn't the even cheat code. I wouldn't even like play actual games. Mm -hmm. I would go to practice with the Atlanta Falcons, and I would move the ball all the way like to midfield, call it pass and play, go, and then I just scramble around with Mike Vick for like five minutes to see if anybody could tackle him. Yeah, and that's back. I'll scramble all the way back to the end say, zone. Juke, run up, mm -hmm. run back, just to see how long I could. I would do this like several days out of the week when I got home from school, mm -hmm. going to practice and just see how long I could run around with Mike Vick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it it was silly and very dumb, but also amazing. Mm -hmm. Seeing how overpowered they made Mike Vick for that video, probably the most overpowered player yeah. in football game history. Mm -hmm. A guy you could literally just run around for minutes on end, and he you, he wouldn't get tackled. Yeah, that's why they ended stamina eventually. And it, yes, and it, it was the just the most fun, mm -hmm. just uh, playing football video games as a kid. Yeah, stuff like that, like stuff like that. Playing like the when they used to have the skills challenges in Madden. Mm -hmm. I I I miss stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's uh, yeah. Michael Vick number one. Madden 04. Yeah. It's one of the Maddens I missed out on. That is unfortunate. It's one of the greats. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, we greats. had Madden 2000 for the N64 was like my first one. And then, again, I, we probably got it at a garage sale, so I didn't really play it. Um, And then I wasn't really into football, so we didn't get a football game until like my brother was old enough to really enjoy it. So we got Madden 07 hmm. for the GameCube. Um. For my brother, basically. And then that's when we started getting, basically every year, we got the new Madden game. But So I missed out on the 04 sensation. But what are you going to do? We were playing NBA Live and stuff at that point. so That's when Live was in its prime. Um, one other honorable mention that I have to bring up. Anytime you talk about uh, sports, video games, one specific player always comes to mind. Pablo Sanchez. The greatest of all time in every sport. The greatest of all time. There, how do you just? There's, there's no way to describe how quarterback, Pablo was. point guard, pitcher. Like for his info, it would just be question marks. Yeah, but he was just elite at everything. Mm -hmm. For people that don't know, Pablo Sanchez is part of the backyard series yeah. um, back in the day, growing up, and uh, he was always really good at most everything. I had backyard basketball. Mm. On the Xbox. Yeah. And I love that game. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I had a lot of fun. I had the original backyard baseball that I got out of a cereal box. Wasn't that like a computer game? Yeah. Yeah. And it was uh, you got it in a cereal box. And I remember going to the grocery store and looking at every cereal box to find backyard baseball <laughs> to play it. And I used to play that game all the Those time. Those were the days. Yeah. And then we got backyard football for the GameCube. And we played the crap out of that game, too. And that's where they started adding the pro athletes and stuff. Um, and it was just so much fun. So, yeah. Although my favorite player from the Backyard Series is Pete Wheeler. He was no good at anything except for he was, like, 100 speed. Was that the kid with the glasses? Or was uh, that somebody else? No, he just oh, had okay. red hair and, like, freckles and oh, stuff. Oh, okay. He was, like, tall and lanky. And he was just always, like, super fast, but he couldn't do much else. So, yeah. Backyard Series was fun. Um, so hopefully, with College Football 25 coming out, hopefully they do things right. Hopefully things are fun. They gave a little trailer. They're supposed to bring the Road to Glory back. And uh, what else? The Dynasty is going to be there. It seems like all the old modes are going to be there. Yeah. So The mascot mode won't be there. But Yeah, that's yeah. the one disappointing one so far. But Pretty much everything else is going to be there. And I'm hoping that they have a, a somewhat of a new engine so that they're not using the same thing as the Madden. That's my well, only it, concern. It's it's pretty, it's basically based off of the same engine. They yeah. couldn't like create a new one, right? But I, but I hope they make some tweaks. From what I've heard, there there's going to be a gameplay trailer soon, mm -hmm. and they've made several tweaks to where it is clearly different from Madden. Mm -hmm. And that's really that's all. I, I don't want the, uh, an exact clone. Right. I don't think we'll get that. Yeah. Um. What team are you going to turn around first? In college football, twenty-five, uh, Coastal Carolina. Nice. Yeah. I have no. And I, they're they're I, already a good like a a very decent a group of five program, but mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. I'm what, I'm obvious. I'm gonna pick one of the, like the bottom teams too, like one of the teams that are new to FBS, like Kennesaw State or something. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with one of those too, but I I just I have to get used to it again. I have mm -hmm. to get back into the rhythm. I haven't played a football game in some years. Yeah. My NCA 14 got too scratched up and it started freezing on me. Dang. So yeah, it's, it's been a legit three to four years since I played a football game. Yeah. But it's going to be exciting. Should be fun. Um, anything else? Oh, th that was what I was going to bring up really quickly. The something to watch out for is there is a, what's it called? the house versus the NCAA right now. And they're trying to get votes to potentially pay back players of like past years to get money from like NIL type stuff. How does the, how would that even work? I don't know, I'd, but it's I'm, like, yeah, it's like going to send checks to a bunch of players. It's like a multi-billion dollar like lawsuit thing. And so, so, okay. so far, I guess the big 12 is in and the ACC have both joined in. So it's just something to watch out for and put on your radar. Um, I was just reading the ESPN article yesterday, so I don't know exactly all the little stipulations and things like that, but it's like multi-billion dollar thing, which would be crazy. And I don't know how far it's going to go back. I don't know how they're going to disperse stuff, but it's wild. I, I have no idea how they would regulate that through all yeah. the years. Yeah, that's, that sounds like a lot. But it Good could, luck with that. It could change a lot of stuff, so it's interesting. All righty. That's it for today. Um, next week, like we said, we'll go over NBA playoff stuff. If there's any other football news, we're getting close to, uh, I think it's like June. I don't know if it's the first, as soon as June comes, or it's like June 6th is when um, NFL players are like eligible for their um, extensions or whatever, um, or some of their like player options or something. It's where a lot of teams you might start seeing some trades happen because that's when um, there's not as big of a cap hit. So, like, watch out for guys like Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel. One of them may be on the move, something like that, um, which is interesting. Um, and then maybe we'll have another fun topic depending on how much is going on. But we'll see. Uh, this has been Views from the Sidelines, and we'll see you guys next time.